Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. K, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we are moving on towards the end of our Getting Started unit. Topic for the day is going to be systems analysis. So as always, let me get you your objectives, and we'll get going for the day. So by the end of this video, here's the stuff that I need you to know or be able to do. First thing, explain the importance of systems analysis. Second, Compare and contrast open and closed systems. And finally, we will finish with describing positive and negative feedback loops. So that's what we got for the day. Let's start talking about some stuff. First thing I want to talk about is systems analysis and what it is. Now, systems analysis is basically looking at how the different parts of a system all work together to function properly. If we think about an environmental scientist going into an ecosystem, they could sit there and study just an individual plant, but looking at just that individual plant would not give them a sense of the bigger picture of how the different parts of the ecosystem was functioning together. Also, if they were just looking at that one plant, they probably wouldn't be able to see the impact that say human activity was having on the ecosystem as a whole. So most environmental scientists focus on bigger systems so they can see how the things that are humans that humans are doing are changing the ecosystem at large. So just have in your head systems analysis is looking at the way that all of the pieces and parts of a system interact with each other to function. As we think about systems, we got to talk about open versus closed system. Now, there are two types, obviously an open system and a closed system. Open systems are systems in which something comes in and something goes out. Okay, so it's kind of got like a door going in and a door going out. A closed system is a system in which something comes in Actually, no, scratch that. That's wrong. Forgive me. I'm going to scratch that out. A closed system is a system where nothing comes in and nothing goes out. So in a closed system, everything just kind of cir circulates within the system. So as we talk about Earth, Earth is actually both an open system and a closed system. With regard to energy, Earth is an open system because we have got the sun, the sun is sending energy to Earth all the time, and the Earth is always radiating energy back out to space. So with regards to energy, Earth is a open system. Earth is a closed system with regard to matter because there is no new matter being added to the Earth, and generally there is no matter leaving the Earth. Now obviously you could argue that humans shooting rockets and satellites and stuff into space is sending matter off of the earth but left to its own earth is a closed system when it comes to matter nothing new is coming in and nothing is going out so I'll recap that one more time earth is an open system with regard to energy because energy is always coming in and going out energy and earth is a closed system with regard to matter because no new matter is coming in and no matter is going out so keep those two separate in your brain and know that earth is both type of system and as we talk about systems every system has got inputs and outputs and an input is whatever goes into the system and output is whatever comes out of the system so if we were to talk about I think in the last video we had the example of lighting a light bulb so in the system of lighting a light bulb you could say that our input is coal that coal goes through the power plant the output of this power plant is electricity so input coal output electricity every system that we look at will have some sort of input and output um, the more efficient the system the closer the output will be to the input the less efficient the system the greater a difference between the input and the output so if you remember yesterday we talked about um, using coal to light a traditional light bulb as being a highly inefficient system. So in that case, your input of coal energy is giant compared to just the little tiny bit of electricity you get out on the other end. So that would be an example of inputs and outputs with regard to a system. The other thing we need to talk about with regard to systems is the idea of being in a steady state. Now, 
we said every system has got inputs and outputs. When the inputs match the outputs such that the system is not really changing, the system is said to be in a steady state. So that dam right there, that's the Hoover Dam right outside Las Vegas, um, is an example of a steady state system. If you see behind the dam is the reservoir. The reservoir will always stay about the same level because the river that is flowing into the reservoir obviously fills it up, but they also let water out of the dam. So they let water out of the bottom of the dam at the same rate the river flows into the lake, and so the level of the lake doesn't change. It just remains constant. Now, as environmental scientists go through system analysis on ecosystems, it's really important for them to understand what the steady state of a system looks like because if they understand what the steady state of a system looks like, then they can start looking at what might be changing within a system or they know what it, the system is going to look like if it does change. So understanding steady state is really important for the discipline of environmental science. And I've got two final slides to finish up here. Throughout the class, we're going to talk about negative and positive feedback loops. And basically, this is talking about how a system responds to changes. When a system is changed, it can do one of two things. It can either resist the change or it can amplify the change. So a negative feedback loop is an example of a system resisting change. And I've got a thermostat there as an example because that's kind of like your classic example of a negative feedback loop. So here's how it works. We've got our Nest thermostat here. Our nest is set at 72 degrees. Let's say that your house gets up to, I don't know, 75 degrees. When your house gets up to 75 degrees, that is going to trigger the thermostat, which will turn the air conditioning on. As the air conditioning cools down the house, it will get closer to 72 degrees. Once it hits 72 degrees, the system is going to shut down. Okay, so negative feedback loops shut down the system. And I'll talk to you about one more time. Your set point is 72. Every negative feedback loop's got some sort of set point. It wants to stay at that point. So this wants to keep the house at 72 degrees. It gets up to 75. AC goes on, brings the house back down to 72. And the thermostat shuts things down until the house gets too warm again. So that is an example of a negative feedback loop. A positive feedback loop amplifies a change. So a small thing starts and then by the end it's a big thing. A quick visual example of this would be like a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts as a little tiny snowball and as it gets down towards the bottom of the hill it collects snow and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. One of the examples in environmental science that we'll talk about a lot is this idea of vanishing arctic ice and here's basically how it works. As the world gets warmer that causes the arctic sea ice to melt. That makes sense. Things get warmer, ice melts. So Temperature around the world rises, the ice melts, but here's where the feedback loop comes in. As that ice melts, it exposes dark ocean water. If you've ever worn a black t-shirt on a hot day, you know that things that are darker absorb more heat. So as darker ocean water is exposed due to melting ice, the world actually gets warmer, which causes even more ice to melt, which causes even more dark water to be exposed which causes even more rising, and you can see how this goes. It is a positive feedback loop where the change gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's what I got for the day. So thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.